I think one thing that we might all be able to agree on is the fact that makeup is fun. <laughs> makeup is so fun. And it's fun to explore different types of makeup and see how makeup evolves over time. And we have had some evolutions in the beauty space on YouTube. And one of the things I've really been enjoying lately is kind of going back in time and, and thinking about how trends have changed, how products have changed. And I had put up a poll in my community tab and I asked you all, I said, you know, what video do you want me to do next? Do you want me to do the Anastasia Beverly Hills PR list behind the controversy? Or do you want me to do a favorites and fails rewind and talk about the products that I used to love back in 2017, 2018? And it was like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth the whole time. And this video that you're watching right now actually won. But by the time I realized that was happening, I had already started the ABH video. So if you'd like to watch that one, that one went up last week. Week. But this week, we're going to go back to 2018 and talk about what the worst products I tried in 2018 were and the best products and talk about where they are now. Do we remember them? Are they still in my life? Did I have second thoughts? What is going on with all of the things that I used to love and hate? We're getting into that right now. I do want to clarify though, I had said in the poll that it was going to be 2017 and 2018, but then I realized I actually already did 2017 back in 2019. So I'm actually going to link down below the two videos I've done like this previously. I did one on 2015 and 2016, and then I did one on 2017. This is 2018. Lots of gems in those videos, by the way. It will really take you back. But for this video, let's go ahead and start off with January of 2018. Oh my gosh, so I saw this product and I was like, that is where my fear of pain and skincare came from. It came from this product. This was the first and last PR I ever got from a skincare brand called June Jacobs. This is the Papaya Purifying Enzyme Mask. Uh, yeah, I realized that I uh, have a sensitivity to papaya and skincare. Did not know that. It is usually used as a chemical exfoliator in skincare. I did know that, uh, but I didn't know that I, I don't I know. You could see my face. My face was very, very, very red after using this. Now it did say to put it on between three and 10 minutes. I think I put it on for eight. I never went back and tried it for three. It just was not worth it to me. I'm pretty sure, actually, I can't remember if I passed it on, if I just threw it away, but I know I never use this product again. I forgot to mention, so what I did was I went through the different months and I picked out four of the most interesting ones, two that fell on the lower end and two that fell on the upper end. Some of them, sometimes number one was just kind of meh. I thought there'd be something more interesting to talk about. So I picked the ones that I thought you would find most interesting. So this one is number seven. This is the Fenty Beauty Galaxy Eyeshadow Palette. And if I'm remembering correctly, this was the first Fenty Beauty Eyeshadow Palette and it got terrible reviews. When I purchased this, I purchased this because I loved the color colors and I was really into glitter at the time. We will talk about what's on the corner of my eyes in a little bit. I do still have it and I put it on today. But this glitter, no matter what I use, no matter what glitter glue I use, I used a couple different ones, nothing would adhere these eyeshadows to my eyes. And the other issue was, was when I did use the glitter glue, what was happening was, is that when I blinked my eyes in the crease, it wore away the color of the shadow that was on my lid. So it ended up just looking like a hot mess. This palette was just, it was a no-go for me. I did actually end up returning it to the store before I even filmed Favorites and Fails, so, so I did didn't even have the palette for swatches for the video because back then I used to do swatches and favorites and fails and I'm like sitting here thinking as I'm watching this why didn't why don't I do swatches now I don't know I may you know 2018 Jen had it going on because I did a lot of close-ups and really good like details on the products I talked about in favorites and fails I think I might go back to doing that I'm kind of like looking back like I don't that was better. 
I think I'm going to go back to doing that. I really liked it as I was rewatching these. Anyway, let's move on to some of the favorites. This was number two. This is Chrisanna Ann Cosmetics Eyebrow Pomade because back in 2018, eyebrow pomades, Instagram brows were all the rage. And this one was a pretty affordable price point. It was only 12 bucks, which compared to the ABH was pretty reasonable. And it was an indie brand where Chrisanna Ann had sent me a bunch of stuff. She used to show up in live chat, all of that. Um, we lost touch quite a few years ago, but she had some really nice products. And this was one that had really stood out to me as being very good because it was the perfect texture. Some of the brow pomades that came out back then, they would kind of run through the day, especially if you got any water in your face for any reason, if it was raining or if you, know, you sweated it at all, it would just like run down like this, <laughs> down the sides of your face. Like if you like anyway touched it, it would just smear everywhere. So this one just stayed put and I really like that about it. Unfortunately, it does look like Chrisanna Ann Cosmetics is no longer available. It looks like they went out about the end of 2019, which makes me really sad because she was such a sweetheart. The number one product that month is something that I still have, but have not used in a while. This is the Too Faced Chocolate Gold Palette. And this is either really, really loved or really, really disliked. And I think this compared to the original Chocolate Bar Palette, it was like night and day. This was so, so much better. It does still smell very much like chocolate. It smells very good. One of the things that stood out to me about this palette was it had this like corner over here of more natural colors. So you could kind of set up your look with like these four shades here, however you wanted to do it. And then you could kind of fill in with the colors here, however you wanted it. I remember taking this on vacation a couple of times as my only palette and really, really enjoying it. I also remember my sister-in-law bought this on my recommendation. The sister-in-law that had come over with her Jaclyn Hill palette same sister-in-law if you heard that story. If you haven't, don't worry about it. It's not that important. Anyway, for reference, same person if you remember that story. Anyway, so she did not like this palette at all and I felt so bad because she spent her money on it and she did not like it. I do not use this palette anymore. Uh, I feel like it doesn't hold up to the quality of today's eyeshadows. It is fine. It's still a fine palette, but I have so many palettes that I just enjoy so much more so I never grab for this. I just kind of keep it for nostalgia's sake. February of 2018. Oh my goodness. Okay, so number 10. Again, first and last PR I ever got from a brand. This was from Ilya. Silken eyeshadow stick. Uh, yeah, I had felt like the pigmentation wasn't there for it. Now, looking back on it, and when I look at the swatch now from the video, it doesn't look that bad, especially if you're looking for more of a sheer wash of color. But we weren't really doing sheer washes of color very much back then, so it seemed like it was of low quality, but I think that they were just going for something else and I just didn't get it at the time. I think that if I got that product now, I would probably review it differently because I didn't speak about that it was creasing or anything or that it was poor quality. I just thought that it was too sheer for my preferences. So I kind of feel bad that I put it at number 10 when it really doesn't look like it's that bad of a product. Number eight, this is another one. Same thing, same freaking thing. The Farsali Rose Gold Elixir. I had the $20 mini one because I didn't want to pay for the full size. I just wanted to try it out. And I'm like, why is this so sheer? You can barely even see it on your face. It's like, it's not worth the money because you can't really see it. Like, cause I was just the blinding highlights. That was what was trendy. That was what was popular was these blinding highlights. This is the same kind of product that is so popular today. Uh, so many brands are coming out with these sheer luminescent liquids that you either put on under your foundation. You can mix them with your foundation. You can top it over your your foundation. They're very, very versatile and they just give a very subtle glow. But at the time, <laughs> I was glowing from space, man. I, I didn't know what to do with something like this. So I think that I would review it again very differently today. Number two, <laughs> This is how trends change. Number two is what is on the inner corners of my eyes today. This is the Lit Cosmetics Glitter in Champagne Wishes. I do have it right here. It is absolutely gorgeous. When was the last time I put this on before today? I have absolutely no idea because it is the glitter is so incredibly chunky. And if one of these little glitters gets in your eyeball, it's going to hurt like hell. 
<laughs> I would imagine that today these will be labeled as not eye safe uh, just because the, the glitter chunks are so big. I have so many of these lit glitters because I was like obsessed with them back then. I had, it was right after I had met Stephanie Nicole, if you weren't around there. I'm so sorry you missed out on her amazing reviews and her dry humor and just overall amazingness. I had just met her. She went to, uh, I went to an event with her when I went to go visit her in San Francisco. It was me and Stephanie and my friend uh, Nicole from the channel Yay or Nay Nicole. She still uploads occasionally, but she has like a big time jobby job now. So... <laughs> So she doesn't upload on YouTube nearly as much, but, uh, but yeah, so that's where I fell in love with these was when I went to that event with Stephanie and Nicole. But now I feel like these are much less in trend than they were back then, especially the really chunky glitters like what this one is. I do feel like I should use these more often though, because they really are beautiful and they really are fun. And even if they're not like super trendy, we're going for more natural makeup now. Who cares, man? Throw the glitter on if you want to. And then at number one, I, okay, this is the E Salon Without a Trace Dry Shampoo. I had gotten it in a FabFitFun, which I don't know if it was sponsored at the time or not. I know that FabFitFun sent it to me, but I have no idea if it was sponsored. But they, I said at the time that this was the best dry shampoo that I had ever used. I was going to continue repurchasing it forever. This was amazing. It was life-changing. And I think I had all intentions of repurchasing this. I definitely did but I don't think that I did. I don't think I ended up purchasing another one of these. And you know what? I looked it up and it doesn't exist anymore. And now I'm like, missed opportunity, total missed opportunity. Like what, what did I do? Why did I miss that? The company does still exist. It is online still, but they have a dry shampoo now. It's called the Invisible Dry Cleanser. So I don't know if it's the same formula. Maybe I could reach out to them and find out because like I want this back in my life after I was like so enthusiastic about how freaking life-changing it was. And then I never even repurchased it. I don't know what's wrong with me. I must've gotten distracted. March of 2018. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I used to get a lot of PR from the, the hair care company, Mark Anthony, and things were either big wins or big misses. I had quite a few products in the top two from Mark Anthony. It was like either they were nine or 10 or they were one or two. <laughs> <laughs> there was no in between for those products. I haven't gotten PR from them in years, but I do miss some of the more favorite things. Like I loved their um, their hair masks, especially. They also had some styling products that I really liked, but this one was a huge miss. This was number ten, the Mark Anthony Grow Long Anti Breakage Oil. I said that it was very greasy, and the problem was is even when I used the tiniest bit, it still wherever I had applied it, it made my hair greasy from the jump. Um, so what I've been doing lately with hair oil. Um, I do have the, I think it's from Way. I'll put it up on the screen right now. I can't remember who it's from, but this has been the, the hair oil that I've been using lately. It's more for smoothing than it is for like a grow long kind of situation. But after I blow dry my hair, I put just three drops, three drops in between my fingers and I just kind of gently just kind of pull it over my hair just a little bit and it calms all of my flyaways down, which I absolutely love. As far as grow long stuff. Just two things that uh, I feel like has helped my hair to be more full than it was back then. The first one is Hair AF by Gerard Cosmetics. I am friends with Jen Gerard. She did send it to me in PR, but she's never paid me a dime for anything. Um, it's really just, she sent it to me. I tried it. I was super skeptical and I really saw a difference in the amount of hair that I had. And I used it for about a year, year and a half. But what changed at a year and a half was that I had a full blood panel done and I found out that I have hypothyroidism. Along with the hypothyroidism, my doctor told me that my hormones were completely out of whack and I started medication for both the thyroid and for my hormones. I stopped doing the hair AF, I had run out of it and I was like, you know what? I just wanna see how my hair does with just balancing my hormone levels and figuring all of that out. I am 45 and as we get older, you know, things change within our bodies. If we have a uterus that is doing all of the things that it typically does, when that starts shutting down, things start changing within our bodies as far as our hormones go and 
you know, something was changing in my body that I didn't realize that was causing some hair loss. And when I balanced my hormones, I really feel like it made a huge difference in the amount of hair that is growing out of my head. So if you are suffering from hair loss, you may want to talk to your doctor about it and get your thyroid levels checked, get your hormone levels checked and see if there is something going on there. Number nine. Okay. Cover effects shimmer veil. All right. I had gotten it from BoxyCharm. I said that it was sheer. It was not a good lasting power. And if I built it up, it creased. Again, it's a sheer product that was probably meant to be sheer. And I didn't want it to be sheer. I wanted it to be opaque. I wanted it to be punchy. I wanted it to, to scream on my lids. And it just wasn't doing that. I don't think I, I think I just didn't understand the product. <laughs> That's why it was so low down. But number four was very much where I was at the time, and I still have it. This is the Tarte Skin Twinkle Lighting Palette Volume 2. I will never get rid of this. I think I will have this until the day I die. I freaking love this palette. Well, every once in a while, I still pull it out. I don't pull out that often. I am wearing it on my cheeks today. You can see I'm glowing to the gods today. This palette... Oh my gosh, I still love it. It's beautiful, beautiful shades. I used this one today. This is the, the one that I use the most. Not super well used because I don't ever use it. I was always bouncing around to all different things. But whenever I think to use this, I grab it and use it. It's very rare though. I would say once every few months or so, maybe even longer than that, I use it. It's not that often. But when I do, I remember how much I love it. And it's still very strong. Smells like vanilla. And I love the packaging. It's very, um, very heavy packaging. It just feels nice. I haven't bought a lot of Tarte lately, especially palettes. So I don't know if their packaging still feels this nice. But it does feel really nice. And I still really like this, even though I don't reach for it probably as much as I could. And then finally, at number one, another thing that was freaking life-changing that I stopped purchasing and I don't know why. These are Cocoa Lashes. They're very inexpensive expensive pairs of lashes. So they were between $4 and $8 for a pair of lashes. And I had heard about these from my girl, Raw Beauty Christie, who was dying over them at the time. I bought a bunch of them. When I went through them, I bought some more. When I went through them, I think I just stopped buying them. I think what ended up happening was I ended up just getting on Ardell and getting the multi-packs of Ardell and just not really caring about, you know, this shape or that shape or, you know, making it all complicated, you know? I just, I put on my, my Ardells and I'm happy. <laughs> I don't have to make, you know, do different styles of lashes. It was just too complicated. So I think that might have been why I stopped buying from this brand. Uh, but I, they still exist. They're still around if you want to try them. I really liked them at the time. April of 2018. So the number nine one is a product that I do still have, but I don't use it anymore. I finally found an alternative that I like better. Uh, I did purchase this. I think it was like at an IMATS. This is the Sigma Brush Tower. And you're supposed to use it to clean your brushes, right? So I'll just show you the clip from the video because I explain it really well in that. So let's say I've got a large brush like this. And what these things down here are supposed to do is they're supposed to be for shaping. But the problem is, is that these bands are not very big. So when I'm washing brushes, I don't want to spend forever fiddling with something. I, it's a long, tedious process. So I want things to go quickly and easily. And I, and number one, you have to pick this up in order to put the brushes in the thing. And then you've got to wiggle them all in here. And then you've got to figure out how you're going to smash them in here. And you've got to shape this around. It's like... And then it comes out. <laughs> okay, so let's try that again. And imagine trying to do this when it's full of other brushes. You can't, they'll all fall out. So this is supposed to go, the wet brush is supposed to go inside there. And then you're supposed to snap this in place like that. Okay, and that's just too much work for me when I'm washing my brushes. It's too much. It's not functional. So I ended up kind of abandoning these little wrap things here and just kind of started pressing them in. Now, I do appreciate that there are many different sizes, both in the eye brushes and the face brushes. I like that. I also like that it was very easy to assemble. What I didn't like is as I was putting brushes into one side, the other side started to fall out. And then I'm, I'm getting frustrated because, like I said, I want brush cleaning to be something Something that I can just run through the brushes. My, my biggest work should be actually cleaning the brushes, not putting them on the stand. I am going to keep it uh, and I am going to still use it, but I don't like it. 
it will probably be replaced eventually. Okay, so let me show you what I'm using instead. I had to pull this out of my bathroom, but this is was also sent to me in PR and they given me an affiliate code at the time and a bunch of you got them. I hope that you love them as much as I do. Um, I still use this. This is my go-to brush cleaning thing. This is a brand called Rivenly, I think is how you pronounce it. And it is wonderful for drying brushes. So when you clean your brushes, of course, you don't want the water going inside the ferrule because that's how your brushes don't last very long. But what this has is this little shelf here so that when you lay your brush on it, it angles downward so that the water goes out of it instead of inside. This is a rubber mat, so it also helps to hold the brush on there so that it doesn't roll off. Off, which is really nice. I always put my makeup sponges in here because it's got like a little draining thing, which is great. And air goes through it. It's got these holes on purpose so that the air can circulate. It doesn't sit flat on your countertop. It's got air going through it. So you don't have to worry about the water sitting in there unnecessarily. Air can get all around it. And I still really love this. This is the one that I'm consistently using now. So this one, I don't know why I still have it. It sits in my closet. <laughs> this is the one that I use, but I promise no shade to Sigma because I love Sigma. I don't want Sigma to think that I don't love them because I do. I love them very much. I just didn't love that. Number six. Okay. This actually ended up coming back in my favorites and fails lower because I had to update y'all on it. So this is the House of Lashes eyelash adhesive. I had said at the time that it works better on the black lash bands, like the, the thick solid ones, rather than the clear lash bands. I have a preference for the clear lash bands. That's just, you know, what I tend to like. But the black lash bands that are that are thicker, but the problem is the, the fact that it's thicker means that more lash glue is going to go onto your eyelid. And the the problem with the House of Lashes lash glue is that it is so adhesive that it rips your skin off your face. <laughs> Not literally, but it hurts. It hurts to remove. And I tried all kinds of, you know, oil-based eye makeup removers and things to get the glue to loosen up a little bit. I tried so many things to get these things off without having to pull and yank. Uh, but I ended up yanking out a ton of my lashes using this lash glue. And I ended up never buying it again. Now I'm a big fan of just regular Duo. I freaking love Duo. The Kiss, Kiss Lash Glue is very good. Um, you know, I don't, I, I never bought it again because it hurt. <laughs> Number four, I still have this product is legendary in our space. Legendary. This is the ABH Amorezi Highlighter. I'm never getting rid of this. I could probably sell this. I bet you I could sell this even though it's used because this freaking legendary. This highlighter is so freaking gorgeous. And talking about the trend of a not from space highlighter starting off early, that's exactly what this is. It is just a light wash of color. But for some reason, something about this really made me like it. But I think today I would put it up way higher on a countdown than I did back then. I think that I still, again, I was more going for like the Tarte from Space kind of highlighter. I wasn't really going for the sheer, but I thought it was a really neat concept to be more sheer of a highlight. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> Goodness gracious, oh my gosh. Looking back, sometimes I just laugh at myself. I was like, all right, whatever, Jen. <laughs> Another product though that was legit good and is still legit good, there's nothing has changed about this. This is actually still the same jar. This is the Beauty Bakery Flower Better Not Bitter setting powder. And I still freaking love this. It's still fabulous. It's about half full, maybe about half full because I'm always switching back and forth between different powders that I have, but I still love this. It's wonderful. I have no complaints. I still feel exactly the same way about it. It's very finely milled. It works very well. I'm wearing it on my face today. It doesn't make me look powdery. It just sets my makeup. It takes away a little bit of shine and it's perfect. Perfect setting powder. <laughs> May of 2018, we are back to the block brows. And at that time, Kat Von D was still associated with KVD Beauty. At the time, I didn't know who she had presented herself to be in the public. I had no idea. I was buying tons of her stuff. I, I was oblivious. I did do a full video when it kind of became public, some of the things from her history. I will link that down below in case you're curious. But when people learned about some of these things in her history, that was when she ended up leaving KVD Beauty. They kept the name. They tried to do all kinds of stuff to twist. It's a long story. But anyway, she left 
and now it's KVD Beauty, but she's not associated with it at all. And she hasn't been for a very long time. So I th I'm thinking this was not too long before that happened. This is the KVD Super Brow Long Wear Brow Pomade. Um, I did not like this because it was too intense for me. It was too much. She came out with all kinds of really cool colors, but it was like a paste. It wasn't, it, you couldn't really even spool it because there was no way to put it on lightly. It was just, it was so thick and so hard to work with. I absolutely hated this product. At this point in life with brows, I mostly use pencils. That's just kind of where I'm at now. But back then, I was into pomades because I feel like a lot of us were. Okay, I forgot this product existed. Completely forgot. This is the Too Faced Glitter Pop Peel Off Eyeliner. Uh, <laughs> my issue with this, which I'm surprised that this was the issue, was that you would put it on and it had like a plastic base to it. So when you were done at the end of the night, you could like literally peel your eyeliner off, which is very odd. Um, I'm pretty sure their glow job uh, face peel off mask thing came out around the same time maybe, but Basically, I think that they kind of did a version of that peel off mask and then made it into an eyeliner. And my issue with it was that I could feel it all day long, that I felt this like strip of plastic on my eye all day. So whenever you're blinking and you're talking, you're expressing yourself, you just, I just felt like a line of plastic. The other thing that I remember about this is that it crackled. If you move too much, if you express too much, especially if you try to do a wing with it, it would crackle. Um, and not be a solid line anymore. It would have holes in it, like lines in. So anyway, terrible product. Uh, I probably now would rate that much lower because that was not a good product. Number five, I still have. This is the Laura Lee Los Angeles Nudie Patootie Palette. Uh, I love the mattes in this, but I was not a fan of the, um, the more foiled shades in here because I found them to be a little bit messy. I had a lot of problems with glitter fallout. Uh, even when I use a glitter glue, I had a lot of problems with them transferring up onto my upper lid. I've kind of figured out how to try to avoid that a little bit at this point besides the glitter glue. What I do now is I'll take a brush after I'm done doing my eyeshadow and just give a little wipe in the crease. So if anything's transferred from my lid to my brow bone, it kind of clears a little bit of that up before I go about my day um, where I wasn't really necessarily paying attention to that back then as much as I do now. So that does help a little bit. And that's another thing. If I had a, an out of the house job um, that I could bring an eyeshadow brush with me and at lunchtime, just take the eyeshadow brush and go a little bloop, 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 bloop and just blend out whatever was transferring and be done. After I tried this palette, I found many, many more palettes that were very emollient like these. They're very creamy that they do transfer. Um, but this was one of the first ones, so it really put me off to, um, to the foiled shades in here. But I kind of got used to it as more brands started coming out with formulas more similar to this. This was kind of the beginning of that really emollient foiled shadow. But overall, I really enjoyed this palette. I do have a full review of it. I can link it down below in case you want to watch it. And then number one, I am so bummed that I can't find this. I literally find this every time I am not looking for it and right now I can't find it. This was the She Flip and Go 6 inch to 18 inch halo hair extension. If you remember my channel back then, I used to wear this in every single video every single video and I'm so bummed that I don't know where it is. It's really bothering me because I, you know what? I think I might remember where it is. Hold on a second. It wasn't there. I am so bummed because I wanted to show you something very specific about it because the reason why I stopped wearing this hair extension was because I grew my hair out gray. Um, starting in 2019 and then through the pandemic and all of that, I wasn't getting my hair done. So I ended up, you know, I had tons of gray hair, tons of gray hair, and it just looked really weird mixed in with all of the gray hair. So I stopped wearing it. And then I guess it was about a year ago or so that I started dyeing my hair again and I brought my hair extension in, which is probably why I can't find it because I don't know where I put it after I brought it into my new hairstylist. And I was like, this was my hair. This was the color that I had my hair back then. Um, because at the time when I bought it, they matched the color of hair to my current hair. And it was so much lighter than my hair now. She was like, I don't know why your hair was that light. She's like, why don't we just do it your natural color? So that's what, what we have right now is as close as we could get to my natural color. But I, I didn't realize at the time how light my hair was compared to my natural color. 
But anyway, this was fantastic. At the time, it gave me so much confidence and I really, really love this. I paid $400 for this and it made me like, Ugh, when I bought it. Um, I remember I was with my husband, John, and he encouraged me to get it because he saw how it looked on me and he was like, it looks beautiful on you. I see how happy you are. He's like, just go ahead and get it. And I did and I did not regret it at all. Uh, but one thing I might do is I might actually get that hair dyed, see if I can get it dyed to this color so that I can wear it again because it really does look pretty it's beautiful hair there's nothing wrong with it it's fantastic it just doesn't match my hair anymore so then something big happened in 2018 so my husband built a van not from scratch but he bought a sprinter van and he built out the inside and we took my husband and me and my two kids and my dog, we drove that van across the country and lived in it for two and a half months. So because of that, there were no favorites and fails for June, July, and August of that year. But it was phenomenal. If you ever have the chance to do something like that and drive around the United States and see all of the things there are to see, there's our country, the United States, is such a cool country as far as how the landscape changes, how the weather changes, how the people change, how, you know, the things you can do change. I mean, it's so cool. It's it's really great. And this particular summer, we actually went up to Banff and Jasper in Canada and it was it was just the best. I we just we had so much fun and I remember we we had finished up the road trip and my kids, we were maybe a few hours from home after being gone for two and a half months. My kids were little and they were singing and laughing together in the back seat. And I was like, this is the coolest thing that they aren't fighting and not only are they not fighting they're laughing and singing together like what a cool trip like what a cool symbol of what a beautiful time we just had as a family and I would I still think about it all the time and you know it's a very very special memory for my family but because of that there were no favorites and fails for June, July and August so let's go ahead and skip to September of 2018. When I got back from the long road trip, I had tons of PR that had loaded up, including a bunch of subscription boxes that had loaded up that I needed to review the products, I needed to review the boxes. So for the rest of the year, I had gotten a lot of stuff from subscription boxes. So one of the things that I had gotten was number 10, the Skin & Co Blue and Kapari Body Wash. And my issue with this, <laughs> I said it had notes of dirt. <laughs> Like it just, it just smelled really earthy and really like floral and very outdoors. Like it was like, I had just come back from being, living in a van for two and a half months. I did not want to smell like outside anymore. I was done with that life. So I really was put off by this product. I think it performed fine. It was just the scent of it. I didn't like. Number nine was another subscription box. Man, subscription boxes. They put out some really bad products sometimes. So this was, I think that was from a FabFitFun, if I remember correctly, but I can't remember. It could have been from a BoxyCharm, I don't know. But this was the Jean de Bleu eyeliner pencil. I, I think that this is just in Ipsy. I don't know if this brand is even available anywhere, but in subscription boxes. But anyway, it, I said it was too waxy. Like essentially I would put it on and it would just smudge off. Like it was just, just terrible, horrible quality. Oh, I have three more things. I guess I, I couldn't let one go. <laughs> oh, I know why. Let, it's number two. Number four, La Mer Soft Fluid Foundation. I had gotten this when I was with Nicole. We were, I was on the road trip. We made it to San Francisco. We went to the Redwoods together. We had a fantastic time. And of course we went to the Sephora. And of course, Nicole got me to spend 125 freaking dollars on a foundation that I loved so much. I did not regret that purchase. I loved it. I said I was never gonna buy it again though because it was so expensive. And I was like, this is ridiculous. But since then I found so many foundations. I feel like that style of foundation, that that satin finish has become really, really popular. And I think a lot of brands have made it. And one of the ones, I actually forgot to mention this in my drugstore video. I want to tell you about this one. Hi, I'm filming. You're doing filming? I'm doing filming. Did you make dinners? Yes. It's in a pan in the um, refrigerator. Okay. Totally forgot 
to put this in my drugstore video. This is so similar to the Lumiere Foundation. This is the Revlon Illuminant Skin Caring Foundation. It's freaking fabulous. It gives the same finish, really, really satin, beautiful, natural finish, medium coverage. Uh, you can build it up too. You can do a light coverage too if you want to, if you don't want to put on that much. Totally fine. They have beautiful shades. This one matches me freaking perfectly. This is in the shade 217. I believe, yes, 217, whatever that is. It got pushed to the back of my drawer for some reason. And when I found it, like a week after I filmed that video, I was like, damn it, this is such a good foundation. So I'm so glad I got a chance to share this with you because this is very, very similar to the La Mer. Number three is a palette I still have. I do not reach for this anymore though. This is the Warrior palette by Juvia's Place. And the reason why I don't reach for this anymore is I've been shying away from these colors, from the golds and the bronzes. I find that I don't, like the way they look on me very much. I tried to push it. Like somebody had told me you're a neutral undertone so you can wear warm colors or cool colors. But I find that I'm really gravitating more toward those cool colors. And maybe it's because of my hair, um, that my hair color being darker, I feel like I just look better in more cool tones. And this is just really, really warm. Um, remember I was saying about the Nudie Patootie palette, how it has those really emollient foils in there. This one has those as well. But for some reason it didn't bother me as much in this. I don't know what the heck happened. I mean, it's still a fantastic palette. Juvia's Place has a really, really good formula. It's just for some reason, I was just dying over this <laughs> when it came out. I really, really loved it. Um, it's still a very good palette, but again, it's just the color story why I didn't, I kind of stopped using it. And then finally, the last one is not makeup related. This would have been a hashtag not sponsored feature if that was a thing back then. Candles by Victoria. I ended up doing a collab with Candles by Victoria on some teacher themed candles that benefited a school that I used to teach at. Um, I That was wonderful. It was a wonderful a fundraiser kind of thing for them. Uh, it, I ended up donating thousands of dollars to them, which was wonderful. We had a whole thing where I worked with, their, um, with the teachers specifically to decide where the money went to, and it was wonderful, but this was from before that. This was when I had just discovered them. I had found them on Instagram randomly when I was at a playground with my kids on the road trip, and I ordered stuff and I got back. So this candle that I don't have anymore and I really need to re-up on, it's probably too late now, it's called Oh My Pumpkin Pecan Waffles, and it is freaking amazing. It is incredible, the smell on this. If you were looking for a really good fall candle, if you were missing that in your life, highly, highly recommend. I kind of wish I told you about this like a month ago so you could have had it for Thanksgiving or, or just even just any fall holiday for Halloween or whatever. Um, but they have a lot of really wonderful scents over there. Victoria is such a sweetheart. It's just a small family owned business in Texas and they just create really, really good products. So I did want to mention that that's why there's so many in this month is because Candles by Victoria. Yes. All right, we have two more months because December is when I do my uh, best of the entire year. So we just have two months left. Let's talk October of 2018. Number 10, Lorac Pro Liquid Lipstick. One of the worst liquid lipsticks I have ever tried in my entire life. It was awful. It was everything you think of when you think of a bad liquid lipstick. I'm going to play the clip because I was actually really funny in this clip. I don't know what was going on. I was in a mood, I guess. I don't have that many wrinkles around my lips, but it immediately started seeping into any kind of creasing I have on the outside of my lips. And my lips really don't have a whole lot of wrinkles on the outside. Then it was incredibly patchy, incredibly patchy. I had to put three layers on it to get it to be opaque. Then after that, it was uncomfortable. It started crackling almost immediately. It looked horrible. Like it looked straight up like some kind of weird fish. Like it was like this weird dark color with like my weird lips and it was just the creepiest looking thing. So long story short, horrible without a lip liner. With a lip liner, it is better. It helps with the comfort of it. It helps with the bleeding of it. It helps with the opacity of it, but it doesn't really truly help it to be comfortable. And I still had that cracking and flaking terribleness. This is a huge no. So yeah, I haven't bought anything from Lorac in many, many years. I think that they're still around and doing business, but they were like, big in our beauty space for so many years. And then they just like fell off. They went into, what was it? Uh, Kohl's. And then they just fell off. 
Like it was like they were gone. Like, all right, well, I guess we're not talking about that anymore. So I don't know. Maybe the li- lipstick was part of it. Like how terrible that formula was. I don't know though. Uh, number nine. But oh gosh, this was a time. I'm so glad this died. I'm so glad this trend died. Butter London's Stroke of Wow Eyeliner. This was when everybody, every brand and their grandmother were coming out with a pizza wheel eyeliner. If you missed this, you missed nothing. It was a, it was an eyeliner designed after a pizza wheel. So it would dip in and then it, you were supposed to run the pizza wheel across your eye. <laughs> And, and it did not take into account that our eye is rounded and it was very difficult to control. And also the line was really thin, like really, really thin. And you couldn't like go back over it because it was so thin that it was, I don't, it was horrible. All of these were horrible, but this one in particular was very horrible. <laughs> they were, I guess, I'm, you know what? I'm not even going to say that. They were all this bad. I don't think I tried one that was good. If you ever tried a pizza wheel eyeliner and you liked it, please tell me. I don't believe you exist. I need to know that you exist if you exist. And I bless you for being able to do it because no, it did not work for me. Number five is actually what's on my eyes today. It is the Urban Decay Elements Palette. I use this palette so much for like two or three months until I moved on from it. And I, I, it's one of those that I just forgot about. I forgot that I had and just stopped using it. And it's wonderful. It's a fantastic palette. Um, I had a lot of fun creating this look today. I used mostly these two shades here, this like mauve duochrome. It's like a mauve purple duochrome kind of situation. And then I used the dark, dark uh, shimmery brown there. I used a little bit of this white shade. Uh, it's kind of like a duochrome pinky white shift uh, in the inner corner a little bit then I covered up with the glitter so you can't really see it in my crease I used the warm brown here and then a little bit of like the dark brown shimmery shade just to kind of try to deepen it a little bit oh and then on my lower lash line I had a lot of fun with the green so I used the deep dark green shimmer here and also kind of the lighter grass green there on the inner part of it and I had a lot of fun playing with this today oh and my lipstick my lipstick today is a lip gloss and then this like deep burnt red color right here is my lipstick today. And I did put a little bit of that iridescent white just in the middle of it to give it a little bit more spice, a little more pizzazz. And I still really like this palette. It performs great. It really does. This is when Urban Decay was like at the end of their yes phase. Like they were doing really, really well. They were crushing it. This was kind of like near the end of that when they started just kind of like teetering off and we stopped really paying attention to them. We were still paying attention back then. <laughs> this was this was a good palette, I will say. I really enjoyed this palette. And then number three was a product that I had gotten on my road trip. I had gotten this um, Maynard, who was in Tool, who's one of my husband's favorite bands. Maynard has a winery. And next to the winery, they have like a little gift shoppy spot. And I had gotten this there. This is from Savannah Bee Company. This is their Royal Jelly Body Butter. And I have been chasing this body butter ever since. It smelled so good. It had the perfect texture where it really hydrated and really felt good on the skin but then it dried down and didn't ever feel greasy it was just such a wonderful product I don't know why I haven't like tried to find that and purchase that because I don't know if it still exists and I forgot to look it up before I filmed I'm gonna have to look that up because that body butter was freaking phenomenal I used it all up and then that was the end of it but I really should buy another one of those because it was awesome I had said that there there was only one Sigma thing that I did not like. Uh, apparently there were two. <laughs> I forgot that put this in here. This is number nine in November. This is officially my least favorite Sigma palette that I've ever owned. Um, something was going on with this formula. I don't know what happened, but it was giving me a hard pan really, really bad where it was getting this like crust on the top of it. I didn't even tell you what it was. It's the Viper palette. I had bought this at an event. Uh, shimmers were really chunky. Um, that hard pan was on there. So I was having trouble getting it to pick up on my brush. Um, just the mattes were fine, but it was like the shimmers were really, really hard to work with in this palette. I was not a fan at all. Uh, thankfully, I haven't had that experience with a Sigma palette since, but that particular palette, I just didn't enjoy working with the shimmers. Number eight, this brand, it was called Private Society Cosmetics, and I found out they are still around. I had no idea they were still around, but back then when they first, this is when they first launched, they sent me a PR package, and the idea behind it was it was Private Society. You had, it was like an exclusive where in order to even access their website, you had to have a secret code, right? 
So I gave the code out in my video when I talked about it, like here's the code so you can get in and unlock it, right? So once you have your code, you can go in and you can shop, but in order to get a lower price, you had to join their private society club, which was a monthly fee. But the worst part about it was that the quality was so poor. It was so bad. Like it was when you think of bad performing makeup, that's what it was. It was just, it just didn't, it was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. So I looked on their website and like I said, they are still around, but everything is at a significantly discounted price. So for example, I had gotten the Glow Getter palette from them in PR. The Glow Getter 2 palette is there. It's only $17. The original price I think was 40 some dollars. And same thing with the eyeshadow palettes. They're $19 now where they were like $40, $50, something like that. So yeah, I did not have a good experience with the products. And of course they never sent me PR again. And I was totally fine with that because I really just did not like it at all. Number two, okay, this was a fun, fun product. Don't use it anymore. <laughs> this was the Air Touch Rotating Makeup Brush. All right, I got it as seen on TV store. I freaking love this brush, let me tell you. It buffed my foundation in so beautifully, so beautifully but I got real annoyed with it after a while. Real, real annoyed because what would happen is, is it would rotate, right? It would, and it would rotate and you could like get it real good like here and here, but it was hard to get like around the nose properly and you could not really get it under the eyes because it was just too aggressive. Like you could get it on the forehead and all that stuff. Whenever you wanted to do anything in the details, it just, you couldn't really get it there because it was just so aggressive in how fast it spun. But it really did make a beautiful finish on my face and I used it for what, like six months, something like that. I used it pretty consistently. And then I was just like, you know, I cleaned it. And then I was like, you know what? This is too much of a pain in the ass. Like I know it's beautiful, but you know, I just know I'm done. I'm done with it and I stopped using it. I still have it somewhere. It's probably in my brush, uh, my little brush container somewhere, but I haven't used it in years. And then finally at number one, da -da 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 -da. Okay. <laughs> last month, number one, the Fenty Beauty Matchsticks. Okay, this is a very sweet story. So I still have it. I'm wearing it today. I blended it in pretty good. So you probably can't even see it, but this was the first time Marlena Stell talked to me. <laughs> Okay, so I was on Twitter and I don't even know how Marlena even knew who I was at the time. Marlena and I are friends now, just so you know. We're like, we talk all the time. But back then, Marle okay, let me rewind even further. Marlena's the reason why this channel exists, okay? I watched Marlena's tutorials. I knew I couldn't do tutorials like she did, but I knew I could tell people my opinions on things and I could, you know, buy stuff and tell people whether it was good or not so you could decide whether or not to waste your money. But anyway, my point was I knew about the beauty space because of Marlena. And I was on Twitter and I was asking about contour products maybe, I don't know, and Marlena responded and I was like, <gasps> and I freaked out and I was like, oh my gosh. And she told me to get this, this Fenty contour stick in amber. She's like, get that, you will love it. And I did, I still love it. I still use it. This is old, um, but I still, I still use it occasionally. It's still really, really good. So thank you, Marlena, for recommending this to me. I appreciate you. Um, it, it is very easy to use, very easy to blend. That's what I said back then. That's what I say now. And uh, yeah, I love that, that that's where I was back then, was fangirling over Marlena. <laughs> It's just so funny. She really is lovely, y'all. She really is. And this was the first thing that she ever personally, you know, told me about. So very, very happy that this is in the countdown we're talking about today. And at this point, my friend, it is your turn in the collective brain of Makeup Awesomeness, also known as the comment section down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. It is your turn to talk about comment on anything that I talked about today or if you haven't tried anything that I talked about today what were you using in 2018 what were you loving what were you not loving what were the trends you were all about what do, what do you wish would come back what are you glad that it's gone I would love to know any of your thoughts about anything down in the comment section down below thank you again so so much for watching I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please give it a thumbs up it really does help me out so so much and if you would like to hang out just a little bit longer YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you over here to watch including one that I picked out for you very special down at the bottom. YouTube picked the top one for you based on your viewing history, but if you do need to go, it is absolutely no problem at all. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did, and mad love to you, and I will see you in a video very, very soon.